Good afternoon. Welcome everybody to this session of Grill the Committee. I'm Diego, and I'm going to introduce, well, actually they are going to introduce themselves first. Uh, so please, every one of you, introduce yourself, say a small fact about you, and then your favorite and less favorite C++20 feature. Please. All right, I'll start. So my name is Juan Alde. I work for uh, Bloomberg, and I am um, in the uh, US national body. My favorite thing about C++20 is probably coroutines. My least favorite thing is not having networking. Oh. <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, okay. uh, or, or use, no. use the one. Or use the yeah. This is for you. Engineering problem. <laughs> hello. Oh, is that working? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, lovely. All right, hello. My name is Guy Davidson and I work for Creative Assembly. My interesting fact is that two years ago, I pledged that I would not speak on an all-male panel without drawing attention to the fact. C++ is greatly underrepresented by women. About 18 months ago, I sent out a rather jokey tweet saying, why isn't there a diversity group called Hash Include? And then Kate Gregory said, do you know what, we should do that. And I thought, oh dear, I'm in trouble now. And so what we did was we created a diversity and inclusion group called Hash Include, and we printed t-shirts. <laughs> there are quite a few of us, but we need more people to support the cause. The cause, no, that's an awful word, isn't it? We need more people to join in. So if you go to includecpp.org, you'll find out all about it. Please join the Discord. And please help to make C++ community bigger and more inclusive, because it's not as if we have enough C++ programmers, is it? My least favorite feature of C++ 20 is also the, no, it's not. It's the absence of executors, yeah. without, which, without which we don't have networking. So, so there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite feature, yeah, my favorite feature is, it's actually a toss-up, and I know he's sitting next to me, but actually it's a toss-up between contracts and coroutines. I'm going to say <laughs> contracts because my host is right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much, Guy. So, I think you all know me. I'm Daniel, and oh, switch off that. Oh, you were. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm a professor here at the University Carlos III for some time. I'm not a programming professor, by the way. I am a computer architecture professor. And my favorite feature of C++ is not contacts. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been working in contacts, but I think the most important feature of C++ 20 by far is concepts. That is the major thing that is going to change the way we write uh, generic code. It has the tiny drawback that some people force us not to have the best syntax we could. And you know, the, and you the less favorite? Huh? And the less? Uh, the, I, I, I have. <laughs> A couple of them. I really wanted graphics, and I didn't get graphics. I thought that was uh, quite important for for C++. So uh, something else might arise, but not let's having, not having graphics. Not having graphics is I am uh, a pity. On it. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna support you. Thank you. Thank you, Timur. Hey, so my name is Timur. I'm, I work in audio and music technology. Been on the committee for about three years now, so relatively recent <coughs> member. Um, my favorite feature uh, of CSS 20 as of two weeks ago is actually coroutines. I was very skeptical of coroutines for a long time. They do this weird thing that they allocate sometimes and they do other weird things. And it took me a while to understand that they're actually much better and easier to use than I thought, and now I really like them. So it's an example of, you know, before you're skeptical about something, you know, sit down with the experts, really try to understand it, and then often you will actually change your mind. Um, my least favorite thing about CSS 20 is that we're not going to have MD span. MD span is 
kind of multidimensional array. And I'm sure many of you have written their own multidimensional arrays. I certainly have, and they got it right, and it's really useful, and I would like to have it, and I have to wait another four years for that. Not good, but hey. Thank you. Axel? Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Axel, I work at CERN. Um, I'm with the committee now in my ninth year, uh, which explains the gray hair up here. <laughs> Um, before I was the reflection guy, I actually was the stood variant guy. Um, you asked for a nice story. So when I started with the committee, I talked to Wille, who did stood optional. And I was like, hey, um, so I'm new. I guess I should do something, you know, do something simple. Stood optional sounds like uh, I can use that as a model for stood variant. So let me just do that. That should be easy, right? And uh, yeah, six, seven years later, we finally had it. Um, my favorite, so it's of course very problematic to be the last of this row because all the good answers are already taken, right? <laughs> but I still have one. So my favorite topic uh, or, or content that is not yet mentioned is actually the spaceship operator. I really like the spaceship operator. We have lots of uh, novice C++ users and I think that this makes things simpler for them. Um, and uh, for the least, I mean for the thing that I dislike most about C++20, I guess it's executors. Oh, it's really frustrating to see how long it takes them. Uh, they always have better ideas and it never gets finalized. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, for you, now it's your turn. I would like to clarify, this is not an ask the committee. This is grill the committee. They are the responsibles that we are need to use this syntax to iterate the repo. Yeah, 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 you are. They are the responsible of vector of bool and some niceties, some niceties like like we have like uh, initial set of list, and of course they wouldn't standardize the only the only possible way to push const is is const, and they wouldn't standardize. But you wouldn't standardize. Please, please do forget about the west const. So now, please, it's your turn for your questions. Grill the committee. Who's going to be the first? Hi. Uh, I was reading the Twitter storm, as you mentioned, about uh, uh, AAA game developers not being sufficiently taken care of by the committee, etc. And I, I don't want to talk about that, but something that arose during that conversation is that it uh, seems like the committee is neglecting the very real problem that compilation times are incredibly high. And it was mentioned that, for instance, this very simple example in ranges with uh, Pythagorean triples, etc., takes like, I don't know, 10 seconds to compile or something like that. I understand that, strictly speaking, the committee has nothing to do with quality of implementation issues, but this, is, this has the potential to impede C++ in the near future. So what are your thoughts about that? Should you, like taking care of this issue, do something about incredibly high compilation times? Who wants to? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's all right. All right, I'll start. Um, mm, yeah, it's horrible. Compilation times are enormous and there's <laughs> Well, no, it is. It's horrible. Compilation times are enormous. We design all these great constructs that make programming, exp that make programming easy, that produces expressive code, that produces you know, blazing fast code that's optimized far beyond any mere mortal could possibly hope to achieve, and yet it takes time. Um, the committee is stuffed with compiler implementers. There are plenty of people who write the compilers and who write the libraries on the committee. And it's something that we think about um, probably not as much as we should, and certainly after this Christmas's thread, um, it's something we are thinking about more. But, you know, the fact of the matter is it, it, you, you have to pay for this somewhere, somehow. Um, Microsoft in Visual Studio offers Edit and Continue, which can, you know, mitigate some of the horror of, of recompilation. But yes, I agree with you, and no, I don't have anything clever to say. <laughs> You've... So we do something totally weird. We have a C++ interpreter. 
and we suffer tremendously because this is about interactivity, right? And if it takes ages to compile slash interpret any C++, then our users get upset. We also have code that for a single translation unit, it takes freaking 20 minutes to compile that. So we are aware of this. And what we tried to do was jump onto the modules train when nobody on the committee was, well, that's exaggerating, but when it was still an infant role or infant place in the committee, and we saw the tremendous benefits that they brought. So I believe that modules can have a huge impact. We are only starting to see the, the sort of um, zeroth order consequences of the modules. I believe we can go f way further uh, with modules than what we currently see in implementations. Currently what modules do is they cache, um, for example, template instantiations, but the pattern we see is that many users provide, um, or much of our interfaces actually take callables, as in lambdas, as template parameters, and there's nothing you can cache because all these lambdas trickle down through all the different call chains and everything needs to get instantiated, so modules won't help there. But we have other code areas where it does help tremendously, and currently we only see this on the AST level, so the, the parsing, the generating types, instantiating templates, what I expect to see in the future is that we see consequences of modules also on the uh, code generation level, that we are able to cache code generation so we don't need to do this again. Yeah, pro probably the place where modules, I think it's not clear they can help is uh, not compilation time, but link time. But for, for, compila for compilation time, I'm quite optimistic that we will end up with enormous uh, speed ups on compilation of translation units. The, the real problem, and I think we have not addressed that yet, is link time. That is next step. Thank you. Next one. Come on, they don't bite if you run fast enough. <laughs> okay, uh, I have a, a quick question. Is what do you think about that, that the language is changing too fast for all C++ developers? Because in 10 years, changed completely. And some, I don't know, but uh, I have the problem that I'm using all compilers that uh, I can use the C++ 20 or even C++ uh, 17, so, and I want to use, but we are still uh, working on all compilers, so. Let, let me say some things. The C++ community is divided between people that say that we are too fast and people that say that we are too slow. <laughs> That's it. Now, uh, I am the oldest in the committee from all of us. So I joined the committee in 2008. Remember those times where we were talking about C++ OX? It was in 2008. Oh, perhaps it's 09. No. And then we started to make the joke, oh, people didn't notice that we were talking about an hexadecimal digit, so we have plenty of time. So by those days, the committee had, in every meeting, between 40 and 50 members. And many people in the community was sort of saying, C++ is a dying language, it doesn't evolve, other languages evolve uh, more agile. Now, since in, in 2011, we, had, we approved here in Madrid the standard. But by that meeting, we had an increase from 40, 50 members to 70 people attending uh, the meeting to approve uh, C++ 11. Last week in Kona, we were 180 people. 180 people. And uh, we have been increasing like 10, 20 per, per meeting sometimes, or 10, 20 
uh, per year. And my feeling is that one good thing of delivering a new version every three years, and we could discuss if it should be two or four, but we decided uh, uh, for three years is that now the community has the feeling that the language is evolving. We are not a dead language uh, anymore. You can expect uh, new things, and that is good. Um, what I would like to add is also, I think that we are also doing a good job at com backwards compatibility, though there is a very fast growth now. I mean, we do remove things that we think are broken, but I think it happens and quite rarely. And I think as long as we do a good job in backwards compatibility, then I don't think that you know, growing too fast is um, maybe as huge a problem as pe sometimes people say, I don't know. Yeah, so for me, actually, that is part of the problem because the, the, the issue is that we're increasing the surface uh, um, area of C++. We're, we're adding new features. And um, for people who learn C++, they basically need to learn everything because they need to deal with old code that uses old style C++, but they're supposed to write new style C++. Um, so because of the backward compatibil compatibility, we cannot kill these old features, but I do think this is a problem. In the end, it's a, um, it's a problem of educating people. I think we are still learning how to teach C++ that we should not start with C as the introduction to C++. That's just bogus, um, but st that's still very common in many courses. So I think uh, as we are evolving C++, we also need to evolve the way we, we educate people about C++. Um, C++ 20 does represent the biggest leap since I think it's actually a bigger leap than C++ 11 um, with ranges, contracts, concepts, modules, coroutines, spaceship operator, to name, just, just to name a few things off the top of my head. I think C++ 20 looks like C++ 2.0, really. It's, it's a whole new language. And teaching all this new stuff is going to be hard. But we do have a study group, SG20. There's that number again. SG20 is entirely devoted to how we teach C++, how people learn C++. Um, and I've, I'm quite excited that we are taking this seriously. I, at the moment, am interviewing a lot of graduates for this intern position. I've had about 200 CVs. I've had about 100 Skype interviews. And I asked them, it's a lot, and I asked them questions like, what's the difference between, you know, what can you tell me about the const keyword? And they'll talk to me about const variables. You know, and what does that mean? What is a const variable? If it's a variable, it's not const. And what they mean is const object. And that kind of fundamental, you know, misunderstanding is something that we need to address before we start talking about, oh, there's too, there's too much in the language, just actually getting the basics right. And I think, I think that's what SG20 is going to, going to focus on. I'm not worried about the huge surface area of the language. I'm glad it's rich, but I'm also glad that we do have strong fundamentals to build anything on. It probably doesn't help that we introduced two new keywords that start with const. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I just want to point out that um, it's a big language. And uh, as Timur mentioned, um, not only we're increasing in the number of people attending the committee, but in the number of papers. Uh, it's going to get to a point where not everybody's going to be able to be an expert in the whole range of C++, but in specific areas. And I think that's, that's a good thing. Job, sec job security, people. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. Questions? Any other question? Hi. Uh, are there any plans to clean up uh, some uh, some of the syntax of the language, or actually have some flags for the compiler in order to uh, uh, to check uh, for specific syntaxes? I'm thinking on the million ways of uh, initializing uh, a variable, or the const keyword that could be placed on the left or on the right of arguments, or uh, has a lot of other meanings, or even the, the static uh, keyword that uh, 
again has a lot of meanings. Is there any, are there any plans for uh, simplifying the language or making a reduced subset of the language? Or even, um, for example, the bool conversion, that m many things can be convertible to, to a boolean. Many times we had some problems with, uh, for example, constructors that received either a boolean or a pointer, or he received a boolean, and uh, by mistake somebody passed a pointer. It's, uh, there are common mistakes, and uh, mm, I don't know if they can be addressed somehow, except uh, by with the language. Especially for the modules. There was a discussion if we should allow only a subset, a modern subset of C++ in a modular context, but uh, we didn't reach a, an agreement. Let me start by your last example. If your problem is that bool argument, my recommendation is never have an argument bool use a named enumeration. This that, is what this we is, do. Uh, and this is in the line of education or, or, or guidelines. Now, one thing we should keep in mind is that breaking compatibility, backwards compatibility is a strong issue. I always tell a story which is not exactly related to, to C++, but one of my first projects when I graduated, I was in a major Spanish company uh, with a consulting team, and then one of these maintenance nights, one of my colleagues said, look, this comment was written by my father. So software lives for a very, very uh, long time. We do not make backwards breakage unless they are really needed. Nevertheless, we have removed things from the language from time to time. We removed the old uh, exceptions and specifications as an example of something that we knew it was, uh, it was broken. But uh, removing something from the language is not easy, it's not going to be fast, because we need to take care of all the code that is in production today. I think something that I understand this problem, I understand also the other problem that we can't really break code unless it's an exceptional circumstance. I think things like tooling, you know, like IDEs, sanitizers, those things, I think they can play an important role to address concerns like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be the language specification always to clean things up. Yeah, but, but I'm thinking at least uh, having some defined standard subset that the compiler could check against. So we could add a, a, not a flag like warnings, uh, like for, uh, for showing warnings, and you ch see a warning if you're using something outside the language. I'm not saying breaking uh, the compilation, but just showing a warning. Warnings is not something that the standard does. Like the standard doesn't say anything about warnings. So yes. Yes. Even, even, even more. Uh, the standard does not say anything about flags. Compiler flags are something from your vendor. So that, that is something, and, I is, and what you are asking, like a tool that checks all these things, looks more like the, the role of a, either a static analy analyzer or a coding guideline conformance tool. Who finds that helpful, this answer? I don't. Sorry? I don't find this helpful as an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, I, ha I, had, in I had very good experiences with Clan Tidy. Oh, so I just want to point out that. What you want, the sorry. example of a tool, Clan Tidy, sometimes does this kind of job for me. Uh, one. Even if the standard removes something or hints about removal of something, if the vendor is not happy with it, he will not do that because he, first and foremost, cares about his customers. And in multiple times, they have expressed that feeling. Look, this is going to break my customers. I'm not going to implement this. So I think something that we could 
play with is uh, considering that we recommend certain features over other features that might be part of the uh, educational part, yes. the SG20. And once we have these set out as sort of rules, then I could imagine that a good compiler would implement flags that give you these recommendations, as in warnings, diagnose the, the cases you use. So I, I do think, actually, that our attitude of, hey, we only care about this specification, we don't care about uh, implementations, is uh, both incorrect and uh, not helpful to the community um, because we have the power to force implementers to provide good implementations. And Thank you. Uh, just a, a final thing. Many of the things that you commented were more in, in the line of detecting t typical problems that you may have. Uh, the C++ standard committee is working with another working group, WG23, which is in charge of software vulnerabilities due to programming languages features. And we are developing a, it will be a report, uh, it's in the form of uh, international standard, where we categorize typical vulnerabilities or problems that you have in your programs due to uh, features of the language and how you can address them. Uh, but this is uh, still a working document. I would expect at least one year more before we can publish that. Thank you. So, yeah, we, we started 10 minutes late, so I think we, we have st still room for a couple of questions more. Hi. Um, I want to ask you about uh, how is the evolution in the runtime? time? Um, I mean, uh, I saw that in the last years, the evolution of the syntax is amazing. Uh, you, you have done a great job, but uh, is any job about uh, how is the runtime? For instance, um, is uh, any work to uh, have the possibility to change the implementation of uh, some library in runtime without uh, stopping the, the program. Thank you. Um, I didn't completely get that. Are you talking about being able to change the code whilst it's running? I'm talking about uh, without the stopping the program, change the, uh, for instance, one version of the class or something like that, something like a class loader or something like that. In, in Sounds like reflection. Maybe Axel? Yeah, I think we had a proposal. So th this is, again, totally out of the reach of the current uh, standard because we don't even basically think beyond one object file. Um, we had a proposal on standardizing shared libraries, which would have been a prerequisite for unloading and reloading of, of new code. Um, does anybody remember what happened to this? Died. I remember it was seen a couple of meetings ago by um, Alexander Fokin, I think, about yes. DLLs. I don't think it has, I haven't seen it the last couple of times. I don't think it has progressed. I don't know. Yeah, this is all connected to people, right? If these people don't push for it, if they don't hand it over to somebody who's at the meetings and they don't come to the meetings themselves, then things get stuck. And it's really unfortunate because there's a whole community waiting for these people to progress. And if you have a proposal that the committee sort of agrees on, then we really rely on these people to make progress. If they don't, then as you see, you know, we're like, ah, what happened to this? Um, so yeah, thanks for bringing this up. I guess we should chase down uh, the, the proposal and see what happens. The, the bad thing about standards committee is that it is formed by a bunch of unpaid volunteers. So everybody works in whatever they like. Thank you. Time for one, one more question. When you're ranting very little, take the chance. Last question. No, he already did one. So that's for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, when you were expressing what things you like or you dislike for the next standard, everything that you think that you dislike is a lack of functionality regarding new 
libraries that give us new functionality. So uh, once we have that new standard, the committee will be focused on create new libraries for new functionality and have more information or more libraries that could help us to, to develop that software or is just a thing that you are working and you are encouraged also to have new core uh, functionalities? Well, the, the committee works on the papers that are presented to it. Um, we don't actually have an agenda. We don't think, I mean, that we have broad issues like, right, we're going to try and get coroutines into C++20. But that's about it. If people start presenting lots and lots of papers about networking, then suddenly we'll, we'll, we'll focus more on networking. So it really is entirely you know, decided by the papers that are brought before us. I think that in the next cycle, 23, we're going to see executors and networking and reflection, um, and we're probably going to see um, more metaprogramming stuff, um, but only if the papers come through. Uh, it's, it's really up to you guys to write the papers and say, let's have this, please. Yeah, I also want to include that for the last corner meeting, we focused mostly, if not exclusively, on papers that had the possibility of making it into the 20 release. The gates will open in Cologne for C23. So, again, reiterating the obvious, bring papers. Also, for you guys, the next four committee meetings are going to happen in Europe. So, you guys are more than welcome to come join us, get in the room, see how it works. They are public meetings. Anyone can attend. Nobody has to pay That's anything. It. Nobody, Nobody has, to pay. has to get an invite. You just need to show up. You know, we've had, we've had waiters voting. You know, we've had, we've had hotel staff voting, <laughs> <laughs> voting in the small rooms. It's honestly, do turn up. It's extraordinary. It's fun. It really is fun. And you will learn more than you can possibly imagine in one week of hearing these extremely experienced implementers discussing how the language should progress. We even had a couple of kids showing up in, in Kona for in, in the committee rooms to see how standardization worked. And those were high school students. Yeah. Up your game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time to finish. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much. These are the folks that are moving forward C++. So give them a big round of applause.